This is the last cup flower of the year. Little Amy K looking a bit worse for wear now. It's nature's way of telling me that this is the end of the season. 2021 has been a good daily a year. Right, so I need to get these tubers into winter storage before it gets too cold. Over the years I've found easier and faster ways of doing most jobs in the Dahlia garden. But realistically I've not found particularly fast or easy ways to divide up the tubers. In its own way this particular job is more backbreaking than digging up the tubers or planting them out. You wouldn't expect that but it's more of a repetitive strain problem than anything else. And what with these tubers from the large tall growing dahlias combined with these tubers from the dwarf dahlias means I've got something round about 600 dahlias to sort out. So I better get on with it. Now there are three main aims that I, I try to achieve while I'm doing this job. Firstly I want to make sure that they all survive the winter and don't rot while they're in storage so the first thing I need to do is to cut off any bits that are either wet or rotting or likely to rot during the winter. But secondly above all else I want to preserve the parts of the dahlia tubers that are going to produce new growth next year, new shoots so that I've got plenty of the varieties that I want. But thirdly I don't want to store parts of the dahlia that are not going to produce a shoot because they'll take up a lot of room although you'll see in the next episode I've a, I have a huge box in which I store them if I put all this lot in there it will overflow so I want to cut off the bits which will be relatively unprodu unproductive before I start let me show you the main tools that I use for this job by far the most important are the scissors a good sharp pair of scissors that will help you get all the rat's tails off the, the tubers and divide them up. I also use these specially designed bonsai scissors. Their long handles and the sharp points help you get into the bits of the tuber that the ordinary scissors won't reach. I use the secateurs for removing the top of the stem although occasionally I have to use these bigger ones if the, if the stem's particularly thick. I occasionally use a paintbrush to get off some of the soil and finally very occasionally I use this yellow sulphur to dust any raw ends. To be honest I don't like using this very much because it stinks. I probably had this pack for about five years. It does work though if you can't get to a particular part of a tuber and it looks wet then you dust it with sulphur and that will stop it rotting over the winter. Oh and last but no, by no means least is my favourite thick plastic label which I use for getting into the cracks between tubers to get all the loose soil out. Couldn't do without this one. Now as I demonstrate how I clean and divide the tubers up I'm going to be talking a lot about the mother tuber. The mother tuber is the one from which the plant directly grew this summer. Now a tuber only has one season. Once it's produced a shoot it will wither and dry up or rot. Here's a perfect example. I think you can see that the tubers nearest to me are rotting. Whereas the ones on the outside edges are firm and intact. Now it's important that you remove the mother tuber. Whatever else you do it's important you remove the mother tuber because it's going to rot over winter and that rot could spread to the rest of the tubers in the storage area. Now when you've removed the tuber there's obviously going to be a wound but that will seal itself within two or three days so that won't be a problem. Now when I look more closely there are actually three mother tubers there all of which are soft and rotting. I'm going to use this special pair of bonsai scissors to remove them. I 
I've now been around and removed all remnants of those mother tubers. That wound will seal up. Before we store this one for the winter, all we need to do now is to remove any rat's tails, like that one, and also any piggyback tubers, like that one. And finally, remove the rest of the stem to about an inch above where all the tubers start. And that one's ready now for storage. Finally, I've attached the label. I like to use polypropylene string for this purpose because it doesn't disintegrate. Now, just a few words about piggyback tubers. This is a tuber that I've already cleaned up but I've left a part on that I want to show you why I need to remove it. This one is a small tuber that's grown on the end of that tuber. Now realistically it's not going to do anything because it's not attached to the crown of the plant and so it's not going to produce a shoot next year. So the worst that could happen is that it could rot. So we need to remove it. And that one's now ready for putting the label on. Now you might wonder whether I wouldn't be better off washing the tubers before I start this process. Well in the past I have tried washing them and I've got to admit it does make it easy to do the splitting process because firstly it reveals where the mother tuber is a lot easier. The mother tuber is a different colour from the rest of the tubers and it shows up a lot better if the tubers have been washed. And of course, secondly, I don't spend as much time scraping off the soil. But I've found there's one big disadvantage with washing the tubers. I find that they tend to shrivel faster. If they don't have the protective coating of the soil on them, they shrivel up a lot faster. I've found the same with washed potatoes. The ready wash ones tend to dry up faster than the ones that have still got the soil on. By the way, here's that particular tuber after I've cleaned it up. I'm now going to make a few clips of it before and after, showing you how a tuber looked before I divided it up and cleaned it, and how it looks after. Here's the first one. Before and after. Before you can see that the mother tuber is already starting to rot and go mouldy. And after. Now the thing about this one is that there's an area there that looks a, bit, a little bit soft and there is a danger that that area will rot and if that part rots the whole thing will rot. So what I'm going to do is use a drill. Sounds a bit drastic I know but use a drill to drill a hole right through the middle like this. So there you are, you can see a hole right through the middle. And just to make sure that, uh, to try to reduce the risk of uh, rot I'm going to stick a bit of sulphur down the middle. Hopefully that should do the trick. Now this one looks quite a large tuber, but in fact when you look closely, the mother tuber is there, but there's a second mother tuber there. And there are several smaller tubers growing out of that mother tuber. They'll all have to come off, so I suspect that when this one's been cleaned up it, it'll look a lot smaller. Yes, as I suspected, all those tubers there were connected to the mother tuber. That was the mother tuber. So out of that whole tuber, the only bit that is left viable are those little bits. That's how it goes sometimes, but I'm still confident that that little bit will produce a shoot next year and we'll still get a plant off it.
I bought a few new varieties this year as I got them as rooted cuttings. And they've all done very well, the flowers have been beautiful. But the one thing about rooted cuttings is that you don't tend to get very big tubers. As you can see with these two. Now the good thing is that you don't have the mother tuber to get rid of. But you do tend to get quite a lot of root hairs like these. Now that I've cleaned it all up, you can see that there's not a great deal left. Whether or not that will survive the winter is debatable. Fortunately, I bought two of this particular variety and I kept one of them as a pot tuber. I'm reasonably confident that the pot tuber will survive even if this one doesn't. In late October I showed you how I combine all the tops of the dailies with leaves off the street to make some compost. And this is how the compost heap looked on the 26th of October. Well today it's 15th of November and look how the compost heap looks now, look how far it's fallen. Here's a bowl full of all the bits that I've cut off. Well I've put all the bits on the compost heap and use the shears to cut them up. The more you cut them up, the faster they'll compost down. Now this tuber should give me a bit of a challenge. If you look closely, there are actually two stems. I don't tend to let dailies have more than one stem, but for some reason I'll allow this one to have two stems. In theory, it should be possible to get two separate tubers out of this dahlia. In cases like this you tend to find that if you remove the mother tuber and clean up most of the other roots it's relatively easy to split it. So there we go, we've got two separate plants there now. It's just a question now of cleaning off all the soil and also cut off all the small little tu thin tubers and all the root hairs and then we can label them up and we've got two separate plants. This one looks quite straightforward. It appears to have three mother tubers in the middle and two, two relatively new tubers on the outside. So it's a question of removing the mother tubers to start with. So that cuts off the first one, making sure that you remove any residue that will rot. Cut off any rat's tails and piggyback tubers on the ones that you want to keep. So that when it's cleaned up, all I'm left with is the two tubers plus the stem. Now you might be surprised to see what I do next. I've found over the years that if you have particularly large tubers, they can be lazy. Any, any growth that comes from the tubers can rely on that tuber for too long. It doesn't put out any new roots and doesn't uh, grow very tall. So I've found that cutting them off like that and letting the, the ends heal before you store them is a good way to keep a tuber at that size. Now before I finish I want to alert you to the fact that there is a completely different way of splitting your tubers. The end product of this method are little tubers like these two here. They get called chicken legs because they do look a little bit like chicken legs. See all that a dahlia needs to grow is a, is a little bit of tuber that's got some goodness in it plus an eye an eye of a, a, a shoot and that is always appears where the tuber meets the stem or the crown of the plant now I'll try to give you a demonstration of how you can produce these little chicken legs you need to look very carefully to see where the eye is appearing before you can even start cutting 
hope that on this particular example you can see the little eye, the small shoot that's at the end of this particular tuber. Now on this particular example I think I can see a couple of eyes at the pla at the, on the place where the little tubers meet the crown and I'm going to use these bonsai scissors to try to remove them. As you can see, I'm not the most dexterous, dexterous person when it comes to doing this job. The beauty of this method is that you end up with a few tubers that take up a lot less space than the way that I do it normally. It's a method that's very popular in the United States and Canada where people store their little tubers in their cool basements or even in the refrigerator, sometimes wrapped in cling film or saran wrap as they call it. Now I do use this method occasionally myself but the big problem is that you need to be able to see the eye and for some reason I find it very difficult to see the eye, whether it's my eyesight I don't know. Anyway, if you're interested in trying this method there are some good videos on YouTube about how to do the chicken leg method. Probably the best YouTube video I've seen on the subject is called How to Divide Big Dahlia Tubers Easily. It was posted by a lady called Eve Hamlin who has a garden and nursery in Washington State in USA. I'll post a, a link to it at the end. So that's it, they're all done now. Don't know what Jess has been doing while I've been doing all of this. Hmm. <sighs> right, now I'm gonna leave these on the workbench for a few days to leave the to give time for them to dry out properly and also so that the wounds have got time to heal properly. The next job in the greenhouse will be to build my big wooden box in which I store the dahlias and then I'll start putting them layer by layer covered, in by, covered by compost ready for winter. In the meantime I've got quite a few discarded tubers to compost that'll keep me quiet.